how to destroy your claims career in one easy step. Step one, get overscoped. The end. Learn what being overscoped means, why it's so bad, why so many new adjusters do it to their ultimate downfall, and what to do instead. Starting now. This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Hague Education. Use code Adjuster TV to get a 15% discount on the best adjuster certifications, damage field guides, and tools at HagueEducation.com. And by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. You want to be considered one of the best adjusters. You know, the adjusters who get the most work opportunities and disaster deployments. In order to do this, you need to be an ace in the estimating software. Adjuster TV now offers complete Xactimate level one and two user certification prep training. Check it out right now at adjustertv.com slash certify. Matt here and welcome to Adjuster TV where I share my more than 20 years of experience as a cap property IA to help you build a rewarding career in claims so that you can help people during natural disasters and earn a great living doing it. All right, let me paint you a picture. It's summertime and hurricane season is in full swing. A major storm makes landfall in a densely populated area generating tens if not hundreds of thousands of property claims and billions in damages. Experienced cat property adjusters breathe through a storm like this, smoothly smash out 300 plus claims, and come home with enough money to buy new cars and pay off their houses. It doesn't happen every year, but it does happen. Newbie adjusters stumble onto the scene and instantly panic. Their phone is on fire with calls. Their managers are yelling at them to get out there and get those claims looked at. Xactimate is starting to look like ancient hieroglyphics at two o'clock in the morning. They're leaving their hotels at 6 a.m. and not getting back until 8 p.m. and they're getting about three hours of sleep total a week. And if they somehow manage to even survive all of this, they will probably go home closing less than the 40 claims that they were initially assigned since 15 of them were taken away and given to the experienced adjusters to close faster. It's basic human psychology. New adjusters overwhelmed by everything coming at them all day, every day, mistake being busy with being productive. So what do they do? Well, they do the easiest thing and the thing that everybody is hammering them to do. They scope and scope and scope and scope and scope and scope. They feel like that because they're doing something that they're getting things done. The reality is, is that they aren't. What's happening is, is that they're getting over scoped and they're digging themselves a hole that they're not gonna be able to get out of. Being over scoped is the state of having more claims inspected than you have closed, okay? You can be a little over scoped or you can be a lot over scoped. The problem with being a little over scoped is that it's a very short distance between that and being a lot over scoped. It's very slippery and will snowball very quickly. The core of being over scoped is that it's a lack of proper prioritization. And here's how it works. Newbie adjuster, we'll call her Molly, cracks under the pressure she's getting from her insureds to come look at their house right away, what other adjusters at orientation are telling her to do, what Facebook is telling her to do, and even what her manager is telling her to do. And she front loads her schedule with five inspections a day for two weeks. She thinks she's going to scope all day and then just drink coffee and stay up all night writing estimates and completing her files. A big hurricane like this only comes around once in a while and she can sleep later, right? Sounds good in theory and on social media, but here is what actually happens. She scopes five on Monday, and since she really doesn't know what she's doing, she does a little bit of work in three of those files that night and is so exhausted from the stress, the windshield time, and being in the hot sun all day, she turns out the light at two o'clock in the morning. Claims closed on Monday equals zero. Tuesday, she does the same thing, and maybe she gets one kind of done and closes it anyway. Then she spends two hours trying to figure out where fence is in Xactimate. Claims closed on Tuesday, maybe one. Now she's nine claims behind. If she keeps this up and somehow manages to figure out how to close claims, she still won't be able to close five a night. So if she's lucky, she might close two, maybe three in a night, but she's still scoping five a day. The end of the two weeks rolls around and she's got 45 claims scoped and maybe 10 or 15 of them turned in. She's falsely relieved right now because she thinks she can just sit around in her hotel room in her jam jams and write these all up over the next few days. Sounds nice. 
And this might not sound bad to you if you've never done claims before or if you're not a very good adjuster, but here's why this is kryptonite to your career. Number one, Molly's files are going to suck. If she scoped five on a Monday and because she's so backed up, she can only get to those estimates even just three days later, late at night, after looking at 15 other ones, sitting in traffic, getting yelled at by contractors, she's not going to remember much about those files. She thinks she will, but just trust me on this one. This is where so many adjusters adjust, which basically means they guess. And it's the number one reason that independent adjusters are not held in the highest esteem in our industry. Our files suck because we're making shit up in the middle of the night. And while her manager may have put a lot of pressure on Molly to get out there and scope, what he really, really wants from her is closed claims. She's not going to have claims closed until at the minimum three weeks into the storm. Her manager didn't have time to deal with her being a newbie at the beginning of the storm. And so he, wrongly I might add, told her to get out there and scope and we'll just figure the rest out later. Not saying it's his fault because this is Molly's responsibility, but he put her career at risk by telling her to do this. If she didn't know any better, she'll sink long before she figures out how to swim. Because Molly really doesn't know what she's doing when she tries to close her claims, they're all going to reopen for corrections and likely supplements that she's gonna have to do in the form of reinspections. If you think that's not a big deal, just consider that one simple correction in Xactimate can cost you 10 or more minutes. If you have six of those, then that's an hour. Molly is going to have 45 of them. And if they happen to change the amount of the claim, she'll have to call the insureds back, which is another 15 minutes plus a high risk of phone tag. The time wastage is exponential. Okay, so this paints a pretty bleak picture. And the truth of the matter is that people who don't know what they're doing are being told by people who don't have time to help them to do the wrong thing but it has a certain logic to it, right? I mean, you can't scope at night, so it might as well get as much daytime work done as possible in the form of scoping. It's almost always a fail. Sure, there are adjusters who make this work, but those people squeaked through their first deployments and then they made a system out of it and their Xactimate skills caught up with them so that they're able to make it work. I still think it's the wrong way for other reasons, including file quality and speed, but that's another video. If you choose to do it this way once you get experience, fine, but if you're new, there's a better way. And that's rule number five, only scope which you can reasonably close that same day. If it's just one, then do just one. If it's four, then do four. So let's give Molly a better chance of surviving her first cat deployment. Instead of going on a scoping rampage, Molly listens to me in this video and she builds her schedule around rule number five. She knows she's got a little bit of grace because she's new, but she also needs to ramp up her speed quickly if she's going to get new claims and lay a solid foundation for herself as a claims pro. So her first three days in the field, she has one inspection appointment and she makes that for 9 a.m. to give herself plenty of time to deal with traffic and she allows as much time as necessary to scope this one loss. She's going to create a written scope, no scoping from photos. She's going to label and import her photos in the car in the insured's driveway and then she's gonna drive straight to the nearest adjuster help room and she's going to demand nicely that they help her close this one claim. She's not gonna leave that help room until she can upload that entire claim closed. Then she'll try and do two a day using the same method for a couple of days, then three. Hopefully towards the end of the second week, she can close four in a day. Close. Inspect. Close. So why does this work and why is this more productive than just being busy and scoping like a crazy woman? First, it builds momentum. Seeing the process of closing a claim will allow Molly to start getting her brain wrapped around everything that needs to go into a claim. She can even take notes on the steps and build herself a checklist so that she can work by herself. The next claim she closes will close faster because she's not seeing it for the first time. It builds confidence. If she did it once, she can do it again. She has room in her schedule to learn. She's giving herself all the space she needs to get all the puzzle pieces put together. She'll be making money right out of the gate. We don't get paid for scoped claims, only closed claims. She'll get feedback and corrections immediately instead of days or weeks into the storm. Because she's closing claims, she's going to set herself up to get new claims. Managers give new claims to the adjusters who are consistently closing solid files. Her files are gonna be more accurate because she's writing them up within hours of scoping them instead of days or weeks. Following rule five is how Molly will scale her claims handling to get more done in less time and guarantee that she gets the resources she needs to be successful on her first and honestly any storm that she works. And this includes daily work as well. All right, get caught up on the rules for adjusting right here. And that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.
Adjuster TV. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Except for bears. Bears will kill you dead.